although several public health measures are put in place to curb its spread, these are rendered less effective due to non-compliance with them and inadequate enforcement. Since the infective agent is relatively new, as, as it enter it into a non-immune population in Namibia, its infectivity is greatly enhanced. In response to the challenges, the government undertook certain measures in order to address the situation and to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. The government has adopted the policy of strengthening and expanding the existing hospitals instead of creating standalone facilities. In this way, the new facilities benefit from the existing health infrastructures like theaters, intensive care units, x-ray facilities, dental services, maternity service, and not to mention the scarce human resource like medical specialists, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dentists, social workers, physiotherapists, as well as other support structures among them, mortuaries, laundries, kitchen, and others. I shall expand on specific intervention on later on, but I shall now elaborate on specific public health measures, as has been announced by His Excellency the President. The continuation of these measures is justified, given the little dividends we have received thus far. To be issued by officers as authorized by the Minister of Health and Social Services in terms of the Public and Environmental Health Act of 2015 and as advertised in public notice number 8 stroke 2021. The following officers are authorized to issue travel permits. One, police officer at the level of station commander or higher rank, or as designated by Inspector General of the Namibian Police. Two, executive directors or regional directors, or staff members as designated by the executive directors or regional directors of the following offices, ministries, and agencies. Agriculture, water and land reform, Defense and Veterans Affairs, Education, Arts and Culture, Environment, Forestry and Tourism, Health and Social Services, Higher Education Technology and Innovation, Industrialization and Trade, and finally, Namibia Central Intelligence Agency. These offices, ministries and agencies will only issue permits that relate to their line functions. Within the restricted zones, employers must issue letters of authorization to employees who are required to perform essential service during the curfew hours. The second point I would like to clarify more is on the barriers. Burials of persons who have died of COVID-19 complications remain a contentious issue in Namibia. I repeat again that we need to adjust and conform to the new imperatives imposed on us by COVID-19 pandemic. A COVID-19 burial must strictly take place within 10 days after the death has occurred. The attendance at the burial site is limited to 10 mourners only. Physical distances of not less than two meters must be maintained at, maintained at all times. It is discouraged for mourners to congregate after the burial, either at the residence of the deceased person or at any other place for whatever reasons. The so-called after-tier parties are disrespectful to the departed individual and are in bad taste 
they are and are therefore prohibited. It is also discouraged to save meals after the burial. Where food is to be served, it must be on a takeaway basis. As I always say, we do not want that one funeral breed more funerals. Let me also clarify the issue of attendance of burials and the prescribed number of attendees. The number of 10 persons applies strictly to the mourners. It does not include service providers. The service providers are the crew of the transport vehicle that contain the casket and the pole bearers who are also the same person to cover the grave and a religious person who perform the rite of cobital. The number of them does not include persons who attend the burial in official capacity and who deliver tributes on behalf of either the government or political parties, as well as the crew for the gun salute. No any other service provider is allowed at the burial site. In case of a state funeral, the ceremonial crew is part of the service providers. It is advised that the number of the ceremonial crew be kept at the minimum in order to avoid overcrowding. Where media coverage is required, the media practitioners are allowed to cover the burial but must observe public health measures like anybody else at all times. I shall now clarify the current situation related to hospital beds, mortuaries, oxygen and vaccination campaign. On the hospital beds, the increase in the number of new infections resulted in the increase in the number of patients who need hospitalization. This means that more beds would be required. The ministry responded by providing additional beds at the existing hospitals. I have a list of different hospitals and the total number of beds, additional beds that, that have been created specifically for COVID-19. The number of beds will be circulated so that I don't need to go into reading them out. But suffice to point out that as for the Katutura hospitals, the additional 410 beds have been created. Vinduk Sutra Hospital 72. All in all for the whole country, we have created additional beds devoted to COVID-19 patients to the amount of 1,050 1, beds with a total number of ICU beds amounting to 143 beds. Currently, any patient, as we speak now, any patient that needs hospitalization is guaranteed a bed with the oxygen supply. Mortuaries. With the increase in the number of deaths, coupled with the delays in conducting burials by relatives, the demand on mortuary space has increased. This is exacerbated by the limited capacity of the private undertakers to conduct burials timely. The shortage of coffin has also been experienced. The state has obtained refrigerated containers to save this additional mortuary space as follow. Two refrigerated containers with 32 cabin each were secured and, had, and have been delivered at the state mortuary at the Vinuk Central Hospital, which amounted to 64 additional cabin. One refrigerated container with 25 shelves was delivered to Mariental Hospital by a private company. One refrigerated container with 45 cabins 
was donated by a private company and was delivered at Okahanja Hospital. A one refrigerated truck with 45 shelves was delivered at Hrothfortein Hospital. Four refrigerated containers are being fitted with 16 shelves each and are earmarked for Ochivarongo, Khobabis, Kienmanshoop, Ananjokwe, and Otapi hospitals. One refrigerated container with 16 shelves was delivered to Rehobot Hospital. All in all, additional 214 mortuary space was created to accommodate the same number of bodies. Moreover, most of the bodies that have been laying in mortuary, some for a good 10 years, have been either buried or cremated with the assistance of the city of Vinduk. On oxygen, deliberate steps have also been taken to improve the supply and availability of life-saving oxygen to our health facilities. There are three ways in which oxygen is supplied to our health facilities, namely by freestanding oxygen generating systems, which is installed at all our district and referral hospitals, by making use of bulk oxygen tanks, and by using of refillable portable oxygen cylinders. A 20-ton bulk oxygen tank was installed to provide oxygen to the 74-bed respiratory unit at Katutra Hospital, where COVID-19 patients are admitted. It is being filled every week, courtesy of the Namibia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. 